Well, thank you very much, everybody. It's a great crowd. There are a lot of people, over 20,000 people couldn't get in, and we didn't need anybody to get the people here. We didn't need a star. We didn't need a star. We didn't need some entertainer to fill it up. And then she goes on last night. In about six minutes, everyone was leaving. They were pouring out. We don't need that. We've got our star. You know who the star is? All of you people are the star. You're the star. And I mean that. Hello, Harrisburg. A very special hello to Pennsylvania. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. Thank you very much. As you know, this is my first return to Pennsylvania since our rally in Butler. We're going back to Butler, too, by the way. People said to me, are you serious? I, I said, I'm serious. We're going back. It's a great place. 18 days ago, where we had a very terrible day, we had a rough day, I will tell you, by all accounts. I should not be with you today. I shouldn't be with you. But I am. I want to thank all of the people of Pennsylvania for their extraordinary love and support. It is incredible. We're going to win this thing so big. We're going to win it big, including everyone at Butler Memorial Hospital. They were fantastic. Wow. Wow. They saw, they saw some pretty bad things. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, they, uh, they did an amazing job. And we have, by the way, we have the doctor. One of the great doctors was uh, there. He worked on Corey, actually. He was Corey had a hard time. Corey. Corey is special. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate it very much. Great. Great doctors. Great doctors. The job they did on David Dutch and James Copenhaver was uh, just incredible. And uh, as you know, they brought him back from very, very seriously wounded. They were going to be uh, maybe not with us. It was a group of us, but they uh, are doing really well now. They're making it. They're going to be fine. Not going to be perfect, maybe. But who is? Who is? As we get older, who is perfect? But uh, the doctors were so great. They had two great doctors also. And most of all, we lift the memory, our memory, to the brave firefighter who was so cruelly taken from us, Corey Comparator. Corey Comparator. <laughs> a very brave guy, loved by his family and his friends. He was really loved. Huh? In his last act on this earth, Corey threw himself over his wife and daughters and died shielding them from the bullets, the bullets of a very disturbed guy. Corey is a hero to all of us, to all of us. I want to thank a friend of mine, too. I'm not going to mention his name because he's pretty well known. And he came up to me. He said, uh, would it be okay if I presented Corey's wife and family with a check. And I said, yeah, it would be okay with me. It's certainly okay. And he handed me a check for $1 million. $1 million. Think of that. Thank you, Dan. So he was very generous. In addition, we have a GoFundMe that's, uh, it's really been great. I think we're at $6 million mark for the, the three of them, plus some other people. So, but you know what? Corey's wife said, I'd rather have my husband. Isn't that good? I know a lot of wives that would not say that. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Beautiful.
Beautiful. That is the most quiet I have ever heard in arena. I have never heard. You could hear a pin drop. No, it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. In the wake of this heinous attack, we gather tonight more determined than ever. Our resolve is unbroken and our will is undeterred. Nothing will stop us on our mission to make America great again. Nothing's going to stop us. Our country is doing badly. Front row Joe's over here. Front row Joe's, look at them. They've been to 212 events. You know, I'm pretty sure we have their vote. I'm not sure. You can never be sure of anything. You're voting for Trump. Okay, front row Joe's. They love us and we love them. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. But as we're fighting to bring back the American dream for you and your family, the radical left Democrat party bosses have installed a puppet candidate to fight only for themselves. Kamala Harris got zero votes. She's totally scripted, owned and controlled by the donors and the power brokers who created her campaign and who rip off our government and make billions and billions of dollars. They want to call them up and they want to they want to deal with her. And I didn't deal like that. I never dealt like that. I didn't need the money. I said, no, I don't want to do that. I told a lot of guys that I like and some guys that I don't like, but very rich people. I just can't do that. I can't do it. They want to do the telephone systems. They want to do lots of little things like that. We'd like to take over the telephone system of the United States. I'm sorry, I can't do that. But unlike her, I cannot be bought and I cannot be controlled. I have no interest in that. My only loyalty is to you, the people. And you know that. Oh, I could have had such a nice, easy life. I could be at a nice place right now, relaxing, watching the waves break in. But I'd rather be right here in Harrisburg with you. People that built our country. You're the people that built our country. I mean, some people don't like saying that, but you are indeed the people that built the country. We have, no matter where we go, we have the most incredible people. After lying to the country for years about Joe Biden's mental and physical condition, Kamala is now being given a personality makeover. Don't forget, four weeks ago, she was like considered the worst. Not smart. Terrible. The worst vice president in history. He's the worst president we've ever had. But they were considered terrible. And all of a sudden, she's the new Margaret Thatcher. That happened, right? <laughs> the great Margaret Thatcher. No, I don't think so. But you're going you're gonna to learn little things like defund the police. That doesn't work, does it, huh? You're going to learn. Because everything about Kamala Harris rollout, it's phony and it's fake. Did you see when President Obama and Michelle called? Did you see? Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. Who is this? Oh, this is Michelle and Barack. Oh, oh. So surprised to hear. They got four cameras in front. Oh, I'm so surprised. It's on speakerphone. Listen, we just want to congratulate you on destroying Joe Biden. I mean, on winning the... Hey, is Joe Biden going to... Was that the phoniest phone call you've ever seen? What do you think, Dan? What do you think? Dan Muser, great congressman. What do you think? Was that a phony phone call? You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't get away. In your district, you wouldn't get away with it, would you? But she's a defund the police radical trying to pass herself off as a tough on crime prosecutor. She wasn't tough on crime. She's only tough on guys like me because they want to go after their political opponents. And we won the big case in Florida. Did you see? We won it. And he... And he had a similar case, but it was much worse, and he didn't have the Presidential Records Act. He had a similar case. And you know, the special counsel, which is basically special prosecutor, adjudged him to be essentially mentally incompetent, with poor memory, but a nice old guy. He's not old. You know, 81 is not old. 
I have friends that are 95 that are still, Bernie Marcus, founder of Home Depot, 95 years old, still sharp, still sharp. I spoke to him the other day, I said, I think you're smarter now than you were 30 years ago. I don't know what's going on. I said, what's going on? It's working every, 81 is not old. And, uh, but he's different, he's a, he's a bad 81. He's a bad 81. And he's ruining, he destroyed, he's destroying our country, I'll tell you, and she's worse than he is. She is actually worse than he is because she's a real radical left. He's a phony radical left. He didn't believe this stuff. He didn't believe in open borders, and she does. She wants to open your borders. She wants to have all electric cars. She loves the all electric car mandate. She destroyed San Francisco. But she's the architect of the border invasion, trying to pretend she's strong on border security. She's now pretending that she was never called the border czar. She was called the border czar the first day. She's the border czar. And uh, she never went. She actually went, you know, they say, they fact check me. Anything I say is like a little. She actually went to a beautiful part of the border. I would love to take my first lady wife there to have dinner. It's beautiful, very safe. <laughs> now, she didn't go to the real border, did she, Front Row Joe? She went, she went to a nice little place, was there for a short period of time and left. So she's never really been to the border, and she's the border czar, and our country's being invaded with people from prisons and people from mental institutions and terrorists. She's a failed vice president leading a failed administration while trying to convince you that she represents hope and change. Well, she does represent change. She wants to turn us into a communist country. That's her change. She was voted the most unpopular vice president in history. That's hard for a vice president to be that unpopular, right? Just like Biden will go down as the single worst president in the history of our nation. The happiest man is Jimmy Carter. He's an old guy right now. He's an old guy, but he's happy because his administration is considered brilliant. Brilliant by comparison to this disaster that we have right now. In her speech in Atlanta last night, Kamala Harris even tried to outbrand a new Southern accent. Did you hear a new accent? If I ever did that, all of those people back there, look at them, look at all those cameras. That's so Oh, when I go through hell, I'd have a week of hell if I ever tried to do that. The contrast could not be more stark. On the one hand, you have a radical left puppet candidate who is fake, fake, fake. And on the other hand, you have a president who will fight, fight, fight for America. This is a hell of a big arena. How many seats? <laughs> this looks like Madison Square Garden. This is a big, this is a big, beautiful place. Wow. I didn't care. I didn't care. Although they'd prefer that we be in an arena. I don't know why. But we're not giving up the outdoor rallies. You know, all those people that we had to turn away today at an outdoor rally, you can have, we had 107,000 people show up in New Jersey. 107,000. But you know, in the South Bronx, we had 25,000 people. It was like a love fest. South Bronx, tough place, but it was a lot of love. No matter how much Kamala Harris tries to change her image, she cannot change this fact. She is the most extreme liberal candidate in the history of our country by far. She's an extreme radical left lunatic. And, you know, I've been saying for the last six months, I've been saying about politicians, because I really know politicians. Well, I've dealt with them on both sides. And, you know, then I said, let's do this, you know. Thank you. But when a politician comes out early on with an idea, like she wants to defund the police and all these other things she wants to do, really bad things, that's where they're at. They're going to be there eventually, right? 
Mike Kelly, stand up, Mike, will you please? This guy, he used to stand up. He's my friend. He endorsed me on day one, right? Day one. Day one. He endorsed me before I was running. He said, that guy's got to run. I endorse him. I didn't even run. I had, I, how many endorsements do I have? Well, you got Kelly of Pennsylvania. I wasn't running. Anyway, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. He would, he would stand out at those outdoor rallies when it was 10 degrees below zero and it was 97 degrees out without a shirt on. It's not that pretty a sight. <laughs> not that pretty, but he would have, he had no fear. He's a tough guy and they love him. They love you in this state. Kamala Harris co-sponsored Bernie Sanders' $32 trillion socialist takeover of the entire U.S. health care system. Think of this. U.S. health care, it would mean that we're going to have to raise your taxes, bankrupt our country, and she supported outlawing all of the private health insurance. A lot of people in this room have great, some people want private health. It's some of it's incredible. You go to these companies, they're doing an incredible job. They want to be able to, she wants that banned and she wants that outlawed. You can't buy that anymore. You're paying for it, but it's great stuff. I mean, some of the companies have unbelievable, the golden plans and all that. And uh, she wants it to be ended. She pledged to give free taxpayer funded health care to all illegal aliens. Think of that. Oh, and she'll do that which will totally destroy our social security system. She sponsored a bill to give illegal aliens taxpayer-funded lawyers so they could sue us. And she called for abolishing ICE. These are unbelievable patriots, by the way. They're almost as tough as our congressman sitting in the front. They're almost as tough as the man that's going to be your next governor, by the way. He's tough, too. He's tough. He's a great military hero. And he'll come up. I'm allowed to have him up for a little while, right? Just a couple of minutes, right? He's great. He's great. And I hear you're doing very well. But you get ready. You get ready. You got to knock him dead. She compared ICE agents to members of the KKK. She likened Border Patrol agents to practitioners of human slavery. We have a lot of those great people here tonight, like Brandon Judd, the head of the union. Paul, we have so many different people. And uh, they didn't like that analogy too much. She voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities numerous times. She supports open borders. That's all you'd have to hear. I think two words. You know, they say, sir, go down a list. We have a list of 25 things. All you have to say is two things. Open borders, defund the police. The rest is all. But, you know, although she is going to kill Social Security, because by putting all of these illegal aliens into Social Security. It's dead. It's dead. She opposes even saying the words illegal alien and radical Islamic terrorists. She backs mass amnesty, mass amnesty, and citizenship for all illegals. She supports mandatory gun confiscation. Would anybody mind, Mr. Congressman, would they mind uh, having their guns ripped out of their arms as they enter their house or their apartment? I don't think so. I don't think. She said that 70 to 80 percent tax rate is, quote, a very bold idea, something that we have to discuss very seriously. She likes it. And, you know, all my life I've watched politicians and they've always said, we will reduce your taxes. We will reduce your taxes. We will cut your taxes. They want to give you a tax increase of five times what you're paying now. How the hell do you get elected? This country is so screwed up. Everything's backwards. We want open border. We want taxing. How do you like to be a politician? We want open borders. We want tax increases. We want all electric cars so that you can go 15 minutes before you charge it up. <laughs> and for all the congressmen that are here, in the Midwest, they built eight charging stations. Now, you know what that is? That's like a gas pump with electricity coming out of it. Just a charging terminal. It cost $9 billion. Did you hear that, Mike? Did you hear that? Scott, oh, oh, oh you yes, said he's another tough. We got tough congressmen here. These are, these are tough cookies, these Pennsylvania guys. Wow. Look at that. We're going to introduce them in a second. Scott. So they spent $9 billion 
on eight charging stations, two of which never worked. I don't think any of them were. She wants government intervention to slash consumption of red meat. They don't want red meat. That means they don't want your cows. Get rid of your cows. We like, does anybody, would anybody like to keep red meat? Raise your hand. You know, think of it. Borders and electric mandate and all of the things. Red meat, oh. How the hell do you get elected, right? You know how they got elected? By cheating. They get elected by cheating. Because nobody, they want to raise your taxes by five times. Oh, please vote for me. I'm going to raise your taxes five times higher. But the red meat is to fight climate change, okay? Climate change. She supports ending cash bail to immediately release criminals upon arrest. They kill somebody. No bail, don't worry about it. No cash. You know, you just killed three people. No. Let's let them out in Harrisburg. It's a wonderful place. And in 2020, she personally urged her followers to donate money to bail out the violent rioters, get them right out of jail, including murderers. You know what that was all about, right? In Minnesota, which I think we have a good chance of winning. Hasn't been won since 1972 by a Republican. And we're leading. Tom Emmer's gonna bring that one home, they tell me. He's gonna bring it home. This November, the American people are going to reject Kamala Harris's dangerous liberal extremism in a massive landslide. We're gonna, too big to rig, right? Too big to rig. Too big, too big to rig. We're not going to let her turn the United States into a communist San Francisco colony. We're not gonna let it happen. That's what they want to do. They want to destroy our country. She's the worst. She was a bad DA long before you had your DA, long before you had some of these DAs that you have, as you know, in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, but in Los Angeles, all over the place, all over the place. You have bad DAs. You have radical left, horrible DAs that are funded by Soros and others. And they're weak, they're just weak on crime. They don't mind if somebody murders somebody. They don't want them to go to jail. You can kill somebody now. Our country is sick. The mindset of our country is sick. And we're not going to let her do to Pennsylvania what she did to California. She destroyed San Francisco. One of the best cities in the world and it's in tatters. So she's a liberal from California. She ruined the state. She ruined this great, one of the greatest cities in the world. You know, 15 years ago, a great friend of mine, Bob Tisch, great guy, who's an owner of the New York Giants, and a very smart guy, wonderful guy too. Maybe even longer, a little longer than 50. He said San Francisco is the best city in our country. And today it's a disaster, just a disaster. He passed away quite a while ago, and he would look down and say, what the hell happened to that? We're going to keep monitoring the rally and bring you any news as it comes. But joining us now is Lee Zeldin, former New York congressman and gubernatorial candidate, and Chris Bedford, author of the Beltway Brief newsletter. All right, Lee, that was his first rally in Pennsylvania since getting shot. What's the biggest takeaway? Well, Clearly, the president is focused on defining his opponent, and you have this long, far-left record of Kamala Harris that... Country. And today, it's a disaster. Just a disaster. He passed away quite a while ago, and he would look down and say, what the hell happened to that city? But he thought San Francisco was one of the greats. He thought Chicago was one of the greats. You know, Chicago, on July 4th weekend, had 117 shootings, and 17 people died. Think of it. Uh, this is not even believable. When you hear about Afghanistan and the horrible job that this president did with Afghanistan, a low point, but they don't have, they don't have anything like that. In one of the most astoundingly phony moments in her speech last night, Kamala Harris bragged that, quote, I will proudly put my record against Donald Trump's any day of the week. I will put it against Donald Trump. Uh, this, this, Got one of the worst records in anywhere. Well, Kamala, let's go. Challenge accepted. Are you ready? Let's compare our record point by point. I 
can't believe I'm doing it. You know, the, the weird thing. I mean, two weeks ago, I was talking about Biden. I didn't even know her name. Nobody did. Kamala, hello. Beautiful. I didn't even know her name. Kamala. I heard she was a rotten border czar. That's about all I knew about her. Her only job was the border, and she never went there. But two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was all about Biden. Then I kept hearing they were going to steal it from him, and I said, you know, it's hard to do, because I understand when you have the delegates. He had all the delegates. He had 100 percent of the delegates. He had 14 million votes. They said, you can't really do it. But then they threatened him very strongly. They said, you're incompetent, and we're going to get you out. He just won, you know. No, they happened to be right. He was incompetent, but these are minor details. No, he just won. He had all the votes. And he could have said no, but he was afraid. And he's an angry man right now. Here's the big question I have. Will he be invited to the Democrat National Convention? Will he be invited, Mr. Congressman? I don't know. Now he will because I'm mentioning it. If I didn't mention it, he would not be invited. But now they have to invite him. But you know what's crazy, the craziest thing? So you don't mind if I go off teleprompter all the time. It's such a shame. I have these great speechwriters. They really are. Ross and Vince, they're great. They're the best speechwriters. And I, you know, I hardly speak about this, but I could read the most gorgeous speech. But you may be bored to tears. No, it's, they're beautiful. The words are beautiful. Everything's great. The sun will rise. The moon will set. The oceans will glisten. I say, that's beautiful. But I'm not sure that Harrisburg wants to hear that stuff. What do you think, Congress? What do you think? Doctor, I don't think so. No, they are great. But I tend to, I tend to go off about 75% of the time. But you know, the hard part is that three, four weeks ago, I was talking about Biden. He's incompetent. He's a horrible president. He's the worst president in the history of the country. Now I say she's the worst vice president, which is true. She's considered the worst. She's the most unpopular vice president in the history of the country. She did a transformation. You know, the press is very corrupt. You know that. They gave her a transformation like Houdini. That was a Houdini-like, that was a magic trick. But don't worry, she's going to fall because it's not about him or her, it's about the policies. They're the same and they're horrible, right? But they gave her so, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know if anybody watch UFC as an example. Do you watch it, right? Dana White, the great Dana White. Did you see him? He introduced me the other, he introduced me the other day at our convention. We had the greatest convention in the history of politics, in my opinion. Thank you, Milwaukee and Wisconsin. And the arena was beautiful. It was an unbelievable. But Dana White introduced me, and he heads up UFC. He's done an incredible job. But it's almost like you're having a fight between two guys, and one guy is getting beat up bad. Then he goes to a debate, right? The debate didn't work out too well. How did the debate work out for him? I don't think so good, Scott. The debate didn't work out exactly good. Then he tried to recover from the debate by going out every day, and it got worse and worse. It was a basic disaster. But it's like having two fighters, and the one guy's getting beat up really badly, really. And they say, all right, stop the fight. Come on out. I'll put a new one in. That's what we have here. Kamala is the new fighter. Who cares? Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. You know that, because you didn't have people sleeping on your lawn all night. We ended catch and release. We stopped asylum, fraud, coal. We got remain in Mexico. Remember that one? You think that was easy to get? I call up the president of Mexico, a friend of mine. He's a socialist, but still he was a friend of mine. He gave us many, many thousands of troops to guard our border while we were building the wall. I built hundreds of miles of wall, and then they didn't want to finish it up, which could have taken place very quickly. But think of it. But. You know, we got remain, think of it, remain in Mexico. That means you can't come into our country. You have to remain in Mexico until you get approved, of which very few people got approved. You think that was easy? That wasn't easy. Negotiated historic safe third agreements, which are complex. I won't waste your time, but they were great. With Central American nations, built 571 miles. Think of that, a border wall. We're going to add another 200, far more than I said I was going to build. And it was working. It was working. It was good. We had the best 
illegal immigration non-flow, I call it. We had, they, don't, they were having a hard time. Also, drugs were way down. Human trafficking was way down. It's human trafficking in, human trafficking in women, mostly. You know, it sounds ancient, human trafficking. It sounds like something from a thousand years ago, but it's as big a business, in a sense, as the drug business. And the reason is because of the internet. The internet made human trafficking a very, very big and horrible business. They traffic in women. They put them in the trunk of a car. They put them in the back seat and they close it up and they, you can't even breathe. And they bring, them, they bring them across the border. We had knocked it down cold and now it's at a level five times greater than it ever was before. Nobody's there to check. Nobody's to look at the car. Nobody knows who's there, who's in it. But you can see it on a certain chart that I have. You know, this chart saved my life. Where is that chart? I love that chart. I'm going to sleep with that chart for the rest of my life. That chart. That chart. You know, the amazing thing, you know, the people that operate the, the computers and all the brilliant equipment we have backstage, she said to me, she, she's great, she's great. She should come out. Just tell her to come out here for a second. Quick, 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 you got to get her out. She's never done this before. She saved my life, in a sense. I said, you saved my life. Here she is. Wow. She's a computer genius. She saved my life. No. So, you know, the story is though, but that chart, I only use it probably less than 20% of the time. So, in other words, we do the rallies and stuff. Sometimes I'll pull it down, sometimes I won't, because I do things a little bit at random while I'm up here. Hello, look at a big fella back there. But I do things a little bit at random. But two things about the chart. It's always on my left, which means I'm gone. It's always on my left. If it was on my left, I have Mr. Governor, Mr. Future Governor. I have no chance, because it would have been perfect, perfect hit. And it's only used a little bit. And I always use it at the end of a speech. I never used it early. In fact, you were saying today, it was so we were really sort of flabbergasted because you called for it at the very beginning of your speech. And that chart, I'm so proud of it. Now I like it much more than I liked it before. <laughs> but see the arrow on the bottom? That's the lowest level of illegal immigration in the history of our country recorded. And that was the last week of my presidency, Mike. So that was the last week. And look what happened to our country after that. And those are now a little bit old. Because if you look on the right, it's a little bit old. Those numbers are much higher. They right now would go off the ceiling. And that's what happened to our country in a short period of time, three and a half years. But look at that number and look at that arrow. So anyway, much more importantly right now, I say, I'm talking about illegal immigration. Real quick. I said, you know what? Pull up the chart. Pull it up. And they weren't ready because, but they're so good. And I said, wow, that was so quick. There's nobody over here except for this lunatic. And because the crowd was massive, as far as the eye could see, as far as, I mean, that's why I love those outdoor sites, because you don't have to send 20,000 people back home. And I hate to do that. They come out and they want to get in, and then you get the seats. Would anybody like to give up your seat? <laughs> I thought you were nicer people than that in Pennsylvania. <laughs> anyway, so, so I, I say chart, and I go like this in the chart. Pew. So, a couple of things. She, she told me today, she said, you know, the amazing thing is you always call for the chart at the end of the speech, not the beginning. So that was one factor. That's crazy. It's always on your left, not your right. It happened to be on the right this time. I don't think I've ever seen it on the right. 
and various other things. And if I'm here, it's over. If I'm here, it's no good. If I'm, I had to be exactly, because he was exactly where that very beautiful woman in the white is, right? Stand up. That's exactly. And my son said, that's not a long distance, 100. I don't know so much about shooting, other than I'm very good for the Second Amendment, I can tell you. But I don't know so much about shooting. But I know about sports, I know about golf. He said, that's like sinking a two-foot putt, Dad. That would be the equivalent, is that right? He actually said it might be less than that, because some people can't sink a two-foot putt, like Biden, I would say Biden. <laughs> Biden can't sink. But, but that's like sinking. Did anybody see the Bryson DeChambeau thing? Did you? That was cool. We had a good time, he's a great guy, great young athlete. So all these things, and you know, then you figure, what are the odds that that happened, right? Where you just, you're literally exactly there, you hadn't made the full turn. But that chart will always be my world's most favorite chart, for a lot of reasons. Number one is that day in Butler, Pennsylvania. And number two is, look at those numbers. That was the lowest number of illegal aliens that we've ever had. So it really was a very important, uh, that was a very important thing. It was done by Border Patrol. Now let's examine the record of border czar Harris. She inherited the strongest border in U.S. history and immediately turned it into the worst border nightmare in the history of the world. There's no country in the world that's ever had a border like this. I think the real number is 20 million people, maybe more. Nobody knows. You know, you have a thing called gotaways. We have millions of gotaways, meaning people that weren't caught, they got away. Upon taking office, Harris and Biden stopped wall construction, halted all deportations, protected sanctuary cities, ended Remain in Mexico and our asylum cooperation agreements, which are very important, and allowed a gigantic invasion of our country, bringing in millions and millions of illegal aliens at levels never seen before. Now, actually, other than that, I thought she was doing a very good job, right? She's done a wonderful job. She's the worst ever. And she's going to be your president. You'll, she will destroy our country. This November, the American people are going to compare these records and they're going to tell Bordazar Harris, you have done a horrible job. You're a disgrace to our country. You're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. Get out. Get the hell out of here. But Kamala is protected by the fake news. They're trying to delete everything she said. Hey, did you ever see the unselect committee? The unselect committee on January 6th, did you see where they went and deleted and destroyed all evidence? Was deleted and destroyed. So I think, Dan, you and all of my friends here, they should be indicted for that. They destroyed evidence. You know why? Because the evidence showed that we were innocent. The evidence showed that Nancy Pelosi should have had protection at the Capitol that I offered her, and they turned it down. The evidence showed that all these stories were fake, including me wanting to grab a big, strong Secret Service agent around the neck. Think of, think of this, think of this. I'm in a car. I say, fellas, I'd love to go down to the Capitol. Sir, we don't think it's good because, you know, you're very exposed there. It's all that's okay. I said, you don't think we can? No. So I said, all right, where do you want to go? They'll go back to the White House. That's the expert. This one person had me getting extremely upset. I don't get upset. When somebody smart says, sir, you're probably better. And nothing was happening. It was just people were walking down. Remember, patriotically, right? Right? Right. <laughs> so they had me coming from the back of the car. Now, these guys are very strong. They're young and strong. Not as strong as me, but they're strong. <laughs> and I grabbed the one guy driving, and he's got arms. He's got arms like this. I grabbed him, and I was rebuffed. And then I went over to the right, and I think he's like a world champion karate guy, right? Like a very tough cookie. Bobby. His name's Bobby. That's all I know, but I know him well. He's a good guy. And I grabbed him around the neck. And I began to 
twist and turn. And he was in tremendous pain because of the power of Trump. Tremendous pain. And then I went back to the White House and I started throwing hamburgers at the wall. This is the story this person told. So they went to the Secret Service. They found out it was all bullshit. Everything. All made up. It was just made up. Which most people, I mean, honestly, most people would think that. You know, think of me grabbing these two strong, tough guys. That's what they do. The one guy said, you know, if I ever, if somebody ever put their arms around me, he's trained automatically to go with his fingers like that. <laughs> you know, that's what he's trained. I, me, I like other things better, personally. I'd like to run the country better. That's what I'd like to do, you know. So they're good with the finger. They're good with their fingers into the eye. The fingers into the eye, and you have a tendency to immediately let go and, and, and get a towel and start crying because it hurts. They say, oh, that hurts. No, it's, it was all made up stuff, you know? It was all made up stuff. But wouldn't you think it is? I mean, who would believe Trump was so angry he grabbed the one guy who was rebuffed? Then he grabbed the other one around the neck. <laughs> These people are sick. Who would believe it? But probably some people do, even if it's five people. But no, but some people would believe it. You know, they hear it. They deleted everything because the stories turned out to be false. They deleted everything. Nancy Pelosi turned down 10,000 troops or National Guard. If we had 500, you wouldn't have had a problem. And what you never see is the crowd. The crowd was, it was the largest crowd I've ever spoken before. And a small portion walked peacefully and patriotically down to the Capitol. You remember the term? Peacefully and patriotically. He's horrible, it's insurrection. You know, if you have an insurrection, you don't say peacefully and patriotically, right, Mike? You say, let's go. No, these are really bad people, these are crooked people. And then her daughter, you saw that about a month ago, her daughter taped her, saying that it was her fault the day their daughter is a cinematographer. I'm sure Nancy's thrilled. They just released the tape where Nancy is saying, this is my fault. This is during the thing because she didn't accept my offer. She said, this is my fault. I could have stopped this. Now she's trying to say, well, she didn't really mean that. Uh, no, these are, these are bad people. They're trying to delete everything that she said over the last, think of that, this is on Kamala. It's no difference. Over the last 10 years, that's controversial or bad. It's like to fund the police, the fact that she was given authority over the border, that, you know, they're trying to say that under no circumstances was she even in charge of the border. And the fake news is trying to delete everything. Are you seeing what's going on? They're trying to delete everything. But you know, it's a wonderful, the internet is wonderful in certain ways. We have every single copy of every article, but they're trying to delete it. Under crazy Kamala's policies, you know, when I got hit, everybody thought I was going to be a nice guy. And they thought I changed. Remember, just before the Republican convention. And, and nobody thought I'd be there. You know, it's not great to be there when your ear is slightly throbbing. <laughs> Let's go to the convention, darling, to the first lady. Let's go. Uh, but I, I got there. I, next day, I left, right? And it was the greatest convention. But... But... And it was like a convention like no other. It was a convention that we were all so proud of. But they all said, Trump is going to be a nice man now. He came close to death. And I, I really agreed with that for about eight hours or so. <laughs> and then I realized they were trying to put me in prison for doing absolutely nothing wrong. They went to judges who are crooked judges. They went to judges who were fake. They had prosecutors who were Democrat, radical lefts, and always in areas where it's like 3% Republican or, or less. And I said, you know, these are bad people. So I was nice for about, what would you say, Dan, three, four, five hours? And then I said, these are bad people. We have to win this battle. And you know what? They're gonna become nicer when we win, but we're gonna to have to win, I believe, to make them reasonable because they are crazy. They are crazy. 
Under Kamala's policies, criminals, rapists, and vicious gang members are pouring in from South America, Asia, Africa, the Middle East, from prisons, from jails, from mental institutions, and insane asylum. You know what an insane asylum is? A step above, right? This is, oh, they go crazy when they want to try and say, he's cognitively impaired. You know, I stand up here for two hours and I speak without a mistake, but when I say Hannibal Lecter, they say, why does he keep mentioning him? Because Hannibal Lecter was a serious psycho, right? He was Silence of the Lambs. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, he'd like to have you for dinner. See the man with the wall? Stand up. Look at this guy. He's here so much. He's great. He's great. He's, he's a Trump voter. I don't think we have to worry about him, do we? He's a Trump voter all the way. But Hannibal Lecter would like to have you for dinner. But these people are now in our country, and they always, you know, actually it's quite clever, I think, but you know, what do you do? But they're always saying like, he mentions Hannibal Lecter, it doesn't make sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. They're coming into our country, and they're coming in from insane asylums, which are closing all over the world. It's not just South America, because we have the worst people representing our country. They laugh at the stupidity of these people all over the world. They're coming from the Congo in Africa, 22 prisoners right out of prisons from the Congo in Africa, not just South America. Meanwhile, our crime rate is going up. How about where they say our crime rate's going down? We just had 117 people shot. You could take just Chicago and the whole nation's congregate crime rate. Look, these are bad people. They're phony people. They're liars. They cheat on elections. They do a lot of bad things. And we have to win this election because crime statistics are a disaster. They're made up by people that work in the White House. And obviously, the crime is getting worse because we have probably 20 million people in our country right now. And every single day, you read about one of these horrible monsters from parts unknown who raped a young girl, killed her, cut him up, uses knives, not guns, because it's a slower death. These are monsters, and we have them in our country. And we're going to deport them at a level like nobody's ever seen. We're going to get them the hell out of our country. They're going back to the country from which they came. Because we have become a dumping ground for the world, and we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to get rid of these liberal lunatics like Kamala. Just yesterday, it was reported that more than 1,000 members of the savage Venezuelan gang, Trendy Arguay, are plotting to conduct ambush attacks on police and law enforcement in the United States, all the while Harris and Biden sit in the White House and try and figure out who's dumber. They sit in the White House. Think of it. Massive, massive numbers of Venezuelan gang members. Now, Venezuela is very smart. They sent them into our country. And then you read that crime is down 72% in Venezuela, which it is. On Sunday, in a separate incident, a Venezuelan illegal alien criminal let in the border by our border czar, Harris, shot a female police officer in Texas. You read about it multiple times with a rifle. Thankfully, the officer is perhaps going to survive. They don't know yet, but probably. But most victims are not so lucky. In Texas last month, 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungari was tied up, sexually assaulted, and strangled to death by two illegal aliens who Biden and Harris released into the United States. If Borders are Harris stays in charge, Every single week will bring never-ending streams of illegal alien rapists, bloodthirsty killers, and child predators to go after our sons and our daughters and our wives and our husbands. They're letting horrible people into our country. They're poisoning. They're poisoning our country. By contrast, if I am elected on day one, we will begin the largest deportation operation in American history. And we will immediately deport all of the criminals that Bordazar Harris has allowed to enter our country. They'll be deported.
But no comparison of our immigration records would be complete without considering the terrorists that this crazy border czar of ours is letting into America. Can, by the way, can anybody imagine her as, in all fairness, we want to be politically correct and all that, great, who cares? Can anybody imagine her dealing with President Xi of China, who's a fierce individual, fierce person? You know, she was sent to deal with Putin to keep him from invading Ukraine, which, by the way, he would have never done if I were president. Israel wouldn't have been attacked. He would not have attacked Ukraine. The recent hits on Israel wouldn't have taken place. We wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had that horrible disaster in Afghanistan. None of these things would have happened. We'd be respected again. Now we're laughed at. All over the world, they're laughing at us. When I was president, terror watch list encounters at the border reached one year, and I don't believe it. It was done by Border Patrol and ICE. They have one year where it was zero. They said, and I, I don't even believe that myself, but you know what, I'll take it. Because the charts are usually the other way. Zero. And then after, and it was part of that that we just looked at, but we had zero terrorists reported coming in in 2019, I believe the year was 2019. Zero. So let's say it was 10 or 20. Now it's thousands of people coming in. I never believed the zero, but I'll tell you, we'll take it. But assuming it was 10, 15, 20, thousands and thousands of terrorists are pouring into our country. Under Kamala Harris, thousands of terrorists have been let right in, right in. And according to news reports, the Biden-Harris administration has absolutely no idea who they are or where the hell they come from. Just come on into our country. But you're going to be finding this out. You're going to have to be, you're going to have a migrant crime statistic that's going to rival anything that we've ever had. And the only thing good about these people, they're very tough people. They come out of those jails and those prisons and those mental institutions. The only thing that is really good about them is they make our criminals look like very nice people. It's true. Our criminals that we used to fear, we don't fear anymore, doctor. They're like nice people compared to the people that are coming into our country. No candidate who would knowingly keep the border open as terrorists pour across it can ever be trusted to be commander in chief. You can't do it. Can't let her, can't let it happen. If she becomes your president, and I think worse than Biden, I think worse than Biden, and he's gone, he's shot. But if she becomes your president, our country is finished, I'll tell you. And Pennsylvania, your beautiful commonwealth, it's always good when you remember it's a commonwealth. He would call it a state often. Remember when Biden used, I used to love this guy, because you were on pins and needles watching him speak. You know, when's he gonna blow it? And it would always happen. Remember he'd finished the speech and he couldn't find the stair, go. Okay. And then these handsome men would run up and grab him and help him. And every time I imitate it, the first lady tells me, why, why do you keep doing that? Because they keep saying you can't find the stairs off the, you know, you've only got about nine stairways off the podium. But unlike Kamala Harris, I will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We're going to keep them out. We're going to be safe. We're going to have a safe place. Fact is, four years ago, we were respected like never before. I would say like never before. We were respected by China, by Iran. Look at Iran. Iran is going wild now, aren't they? You know, Iran was broke when I was president. They didn't have money to give to Hamas. They didn't have money to give to Hezbollah. You see what's going on now with Hezbollah now? You're going to end up in a world war. You're going to end up in a third world war pretty soon with this, with this guy between Ukraine and Russia and the stupidity with which I will get that negotiated and ended before I ever take office. I'll do it after the election as president-elect. In addition to her atrocious record on border security, Kamala Harris would also obliterate Pennsylvania's economy. You know about that. She's against fracking. She's against oil drilling. She wants everybody to have one electric car and share it with the neighbors. Harris has stated repeatedly that she supports, quote, banning fracking. I ban fracking, I will ban it on my first day. Now she's denying it. Remember, 
A politician always goes back to what their original thought was, right? And she co-sponsored the $100 trillion Green News scam designed to abolish the oil, coal, and natural gas industries entirely. We have more liquid gold under our feet than Saudi Arabia, than Russia by far. And under me, we took it from fourth place and third place. We took it to first place by a lot. We were energy independent, soon to be energy dominant. We were going to make so much money. We we're going to pay off debt and reduce your taxes still further. Now, you can't do anything with these lunatics. Under a Harris presidency, 423,000 Pennsylvania jobs are linked to fracking. They'd all be demolished. She's against fracking. She's not going to allow you to frack. She's not going to allow you to frack. And the only reason they're allowing it now, you know, they cut it way back. That's what caused the inflation. And then he opened it up again, back to the Trump days. He opened it up to the same, because it's similar, because he wanted to try and get reelected. They didn't know his party was going to overthrow him. It was a coup. This was a coup of a president. He will be famous. He will be more famous for the coup than the bad job he's done, OK? But this was a coup of the President of the United States. This was a, like a South American, you know, you read about South America, every week they have a coup. And they also do the attacks on political opponents, by the way. Your economy would take a $41 billion hit. This is Pennsylvania. Gutting billions of dollars from your state and local budgets, slashing funding for your schools and police forces, and plunging Pennsylvania into severe economic Depression. Enjoy it. Look, if they get in, your state is screwed. <laughs> your state is screwed. You guys are screwed. Good luck, everybody. Have, a f have fun in Congress, Mike. But I will never let that happen. But you don't need to take my word for it alone. Kamala's anti-American <laughs> energy crusade. Let's just listen to her. Now, she's a totally, oh, no, I, I love her. Fracking. Let's just see what her video says. She had it taped just a little while ago. Let's go. Will you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking your first day in office, adding the United States to the list of countries who have banned this devastating practice? There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Okay. If I said that, nobody would believe it. So, uh, and that's where she is. She's a radical left person who destroyed San Francisco, and she'll destroy the country just like she did California and San Francisco. She was the leader of that pack that destroyed San Francisco. It's not only Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom, he's another beauty. Oh, we're doing great in the state. Everyone's leaving. We're doing great. The state's doing wonderfully. They do have wonderful weather, and it's a beautiful place, but it's overridden with crime. He's doing such a terrible job. He's a con man. You know, I watched him in the great Sean Hannity show, and he was in saying, like, uh, no, the state's never done better, never done. It's all a fake. It's all lies. The state is a disaster. They're moving to Texas, Florida, Tennessee. They're moving to a lot of North Carolina, South Carolina. When we win this November, we will end the Biden-Harris war on American energy, and we will end their terrible war on fracking. Fracking is incredible. The money you make in Pennsylvania, you could quadruple your taxes. If you, if you lost that industry, you could quadruple your taxes. The policy of the Trump administration will be to drill, baby, drill. Right? Right? I will also terminate the Biden-Harris electric vehicle mandate on day one and save the U.S. auto industry from destruction. We are going to rebuild our auto industry, and the United Auto Workers are mostly going to vote for me, but, you know, they have a head of the United Auto Workers who's a fool. He's giving our auto industry to China by allowing this electric mandate to even be thought of. And again, I'm all for electric cars as a certain little section that wants to have electric. I can understand that, but it's a small section. They want to have gasoline-powered cars. They want to have hybrids. And they're going to have that. They don't want to stop every 15 minutes. They refuse to stop. You know, I have a friend of mine got a, an electric car, and he was used to driving from Kentucky, great state, to Washington. And he'd drive, and, you know, he'd drive it. That'll be it. 
Now he's driving it. He had to stop six times. He said, what the hell is going on? He thought it was good for the environment. It's not good for, you know, he's a idealistic kind of guy. I think I'm going to do something good for the environment. He got rid of that thing so fast, your head would spin. And it's great if you want to go to the candy store and back, then you plug it in in your garage. It's no wonder the Democrat Party and their thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. The only ones. You know, this is a movement, Make America Great Again. This is a movement the likes of which no country but our country has never seen before. MAGA. MAGA! No country has ever seen anything like it. Remember when Biden would get up? We will stop MAGA. He had no idea. I said, Joe, do you know what it means? No, not really. No, it means make America great again. We don't want to stop it. All of their persecution is only happening because I am running for president and leading big in the polls. Oh, if I wasn't, I wouldn't have any of these lawsuits. Oh, they wouldn't be suing me because I'm breaking their ass also. They wouldn't be suing me. And they're doing this because I'm running and I'm leading and I'm leading by a lot. We're leading by a lot in this state, by the way, in this commonwealth. We're leading by a lot in our commonwealth. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020 and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it to happen. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Thank you very much. Because I'm being indicted for you. Did you like my mugshot? Did you like the mugshot? Lovely. My father's looking down, my mother and father. They're looking down because they're definitely in heaven. They made heaven. They're great. They're looking down. They said, I can't believe my son took a mugshot. This is unbelievable. But it's the number one selling mugshot in history. It beat Elvis and it beat Frank Sinatra. Did you know that? Frank Sinatra had a big one. Did you know he got arrested for something? And I think Elvis had a fight at a gas station or something. But Elvis was one, Frank Sinatra was two, and I'm proud to admit and I'm proud to tell you that you have made mine bigger than both of them by a lot. It's the biggest selling mugshot ever. And I still haven't figured out whether or not I'm happy about it. I'm not sure. In one way, I'm thrilled. In another way, I'm not sure I like it. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom, which is true. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they are not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way and I will continue to stand in their way. I will always be here. I'll be here, I don't know. I'm getting tired of protecting you, but I love it. We're going to protect you. We're going to go. And soon you won't need protection because soon you're going to have a great country again. It's true. You won't need protection. The country will protect you. But think of it. I say this to I got indicted more than Al Capone, the great Al Capone. Can you imagine? Al Capone, Scarface, the meanest man you've ever met. I have him beat. But we're pleased to be joined today by some fantastic Pennsylvania patriots, friends of mine, incredible people, starting with the next U.S. Senator from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, David McCormick. He's incredible. He's a Come up. David, come up here. Come. He's a military hero. And honestly, you know, you're a senator. I don't think I ever met him in four years. Nobody knows who he is. It's the weirdest thing. It's almost like, how do they keep getting elected? You got to elect this guy. He's a war hero. He's a national hero. He's a brilliant man. He went out, he made a fortune and all that stuff. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. It means he's smart, right? Do we agree? It means he's smart. You guys didn't make that much, but you're very smart anyway. But David has been a friend of mine. He's an incredible man and respected all over the place. And, and, you know, you have one chance to get a guy like this in. A lot of people 
after watching my experience, they're not doing this anymore, are they? So I'd like to introduce Dave McCormick, a great guy. Hopefully he's going to be your next senator. You're going to win, and you're going to win big, David. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you so much, all of you. And listen, in Pennsylvania, we know, Mr. President, this is the most important election of our lifetime. We know it. And we also know that this is ground zero, which is going to put you back in the White House and a majority in the Senate. Right here, sir. Right here in Pennsylvania. And I want to welcome you back to Pennsylvania after Butler. We're so glad you're here, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I want to say what you all know, which is this is an incredibly important choice because we ha can continue to have the failed, horrible policies of Biden, Harris, and Casey. And I say Casey because he votes 98% of the time that destroys our economy, open borders, the fentanyl crisis, crime, the war on fossil fuels, but it only gets worse. It only gets worse under Harris Casey. It only gets worse, and that is why we need strong leadership, common sense leadership, and when I go on the campaign trail, Mr. President, the thing I hear that people want most is strength, and I tell them, listen, I'm a combat veteran, I'm an army wrestler, and when I was standing there in Butler and saw those uh, bullets flying, and I've seen people get shot at before, and you came up and put that fist in the air and said, fight, fight, fight. I said to everybody, that's strength. That's what we need for America. That's why we're going to win on November 5th. God bless this Commonwealth. Wow. Wow. That's great. You know, David, it is true. David was in Butler, and he was sitting exactly there. And you know, Corey was sitting right behind him. Can you imagine? Corey was killed. He was sitting right behind David. And David didn't flinch. He didn't move. I mean, some people moved. Actually, I think it was really known that when bullets are fired in a stadium, everyone really gets moving fast. And they call it a stampede. Nobody moved. You looked at the people behind me, right? Everyone's seen those people. Those people have become legendary. That was just a small group. The main tens of thousands of people around here, you couldn't even see the end. Nobody ran. Nobody moved. They knew I was in trouble. They said, he's in trouble. Every, if you went to a soccer stadium where you'll have a bullet go off, one bullet, the whole place runs for the exits. Nobody ran. And how about the man behind me with the black outfit and the green floppy hat? He's like this. David, did you see him? He's right there. He's standing. He's looking. Right? Where? Get up here. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. Wow. That's great, huh? Well, you're good. You can be in a foxhole with me anytime, man. Thank you. That's great. That was a hell of a day, huh? But there were a number of them back there. They were just brave. Everybody. There was nobody that fled. I think, I think nobody fled, right? They were brave people, and they were looking, and they were pointing. They saw it. They were pointing. It was incredible. And one of these crowd control people that came in afterwards said, they've never seen it where bullets are fired. And I'll tell you something. David was standing and sitting right, literally, the bullets were going over your head. They were going over my head, too, the second group. But uh, you weren't a flincher either, were you? You weren't. And Corey, right alongside of you, right behind him. And uh, you got to vote for this man. He's a hero, and he's a great gentleman. He'll be a great senator. And it's time for a change. Time for a change. I mean that. A vote for Dave McCormick is a vote to seal our border, stop migrant crime defeat inflation, bring down prices, and defend Pennsylvania energy. You have to defend your energy. They will not allow fracking. As soon as, if they got in, her first move will be to end fracking all throughout the United States. 
Dave is running against truly a not a good member. I don't like to be disrespectful. He's been there a long time, but Bob Casey is a stiff. He's a stiff. Nobody, nobody knows who the hell he is. I don't think I've ever gone to a meeting where he's been in the meeting, Mike. Mike has been in the meeting. Dan has been in the meeting. Scott has had too many meetings, right? No, I don't think I've ever been, I don't think I've ever been to a meeting where Casey's even been there. And I've been to a lot of meetings with a lot of senators, but you know, he just sort of goes along year after year. His father was there, he's there. We want to have a great warrior. Dave, good luck. Good luck. Thank you, Dave. Vote for him. We're pleased to be joined today by some really fantastic people, some, I would say, truly great warriors. And if you could, maybe uh, Congress people, just stand up, right? Just stand up. Scott Perry, Mike Kelly, G.T. Thompson, G.T. Hyde, Dan Muser, Lloyd Smucker. These are unbelievable warriors. These are great fighters. And if you can add David, it's going to be an unbeatable combination. Pennsylvania Treasurer, thank you very much, fellas. You've done a great job. You've done a great job. Pennsylvania Treasurer, Stacy Garrity. Lancaster County Commissioner Josh Parsons. Great job, Josh. Jim Worthington, who's a fantastic man. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Nice to see you. And two people that are amazing, very talented, very talented, very incredible people. One is a spokesman for the lawyer, by the way, but a great spokesman, truly committed to make America great, and me but truly committed to make America great, which is more important than me, for more important. I mean, it's just something special. She has been an incredible person going around and, and letting people know how important our country is, how we love our country. Alina Haba. <laughs> Alina, stand up, Alina. I didn't know she was gonna be here today. And another person, one of the most talented writers, a person who truly has the pulse of this area, Pennsylvania, and the Rust Belt in general. The Rust Belt is her territory. Nobody covers it better. Selena Zito. Selena, where are you, Selena? Where are you? Thank you. She's a great, she's a great writer. We're also joined by Tiffany Hall, a single mother of four from Columbia, Pennsylvania, who wants to tell us firsthand what the Biden-Harris inflation nightmare has done to her family, it's destroyed her family. Tiffany, please come up, please. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. This is happening all over America because of inflation, by the way. Thanks, Tiffany. Thank you very much. So, gas prices are just astronomical. Um, being able to afford anything for my children anymore, like sports, is just kind of out of the question now. Um, when President Trump was in, I could do these things with them. Since then, I have not been able to. I can't put them into sports. I can't go on extravagant, extravagant vacations anymore. We can go to free parks around here. I, I miss it. I miss when we didn't have to pull out of our pockets for things. Um, I'm hoping we can get back to a point where I'm financially stable. You will. And others. I know I can't be the only one. We're all going to the gas pump and be like, man, here goes the last of what I have. I know. Thank you. 
I would like to be able to go into a grocery store again and not have to put something back or say, nope, we can't do a, a nice cake from the bakery. We have to try and do one from home. So I really hope and pray that we can make America great again and get you back in office. Wow, thank you, Tiffany. So cute. You know, she said, oh, I can't believe it. I left my notes down on her seat. I said, just go and wing it. And she did better. You did better than if you had your notes, Tiffany. I have to be honest. That's great. You did better. Thank you. Appreciate it. Things like that happen. I said, well, give it a shot. She did better. Starting on day one of the Trump administration, we will end inflation and we will make America great again. We will deliver regulation cuts, energy price cuts, interest rate cuts, and we will drive prices down and we'll drive them down very fast. We will pass massive tax cuts for workers, and that includes no tax on tips. To protect Pennsylvania jobs, I will revoke China's most favored nation trade status. I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If China or any other country makes us pay a 100 or 200 percent tariff for tax, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff or tax of 100 or 200 percent right back. You hurt us and we hurt you. It's an eye for an eye. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, and it's we win the presidency, I mean that, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. And I am the only one that can say it. I know all the players, and they respect us, they respect me, and they used to respect our country, but no longer. I will prevent World War III. That's where we're heading. We're heading to World War III, and you see it. I will restore peace through strength. Over and over again, our enemies have watched Biden and Harris signal a lack of will, total weakness to do what's necessary to protect American people and stand up for our allies. A week ago, the prime minister of our closest Middle Eastern ally, Israel, came to address Congress. You saw that. Instead of sending a clear signal that the United States will never abandon an ally, a very important one. Kamala chose to politicize the moment, to grandstand, make it a show of refusing to attend. You know where she was? She went to a sorority party. Can you believe it? Even though it was her duty as president of the Senate to be there, it was her duty to be there. Her Democrat allies fell in line. Chuck Schumer refused to shake the Israeli prime minister's hand. Chuck Schumer has become a Palestinian. Yes, yes. Can you believe it? He's become a proud member of Hamas. Nancy Pelosi likewise denounced the speech in shameful terms. You know, 15 years ago, Israel had the strongest, most powerful lobby in this country. Now it's almost the opposite with AOC plus three and all the people, the enemies of our country in a true sense. But they are, and the enemies, when they saw all these people abandon Israel, they took note. And I don't think it's accidental that just four days after Harris and Biden repudiated our Israeli allies, Iran's top terrorist group, Hezbollah, fired an Iranian missile to kill 12 innocent children at a soccer field in northern Israel. It happened right after he left. With great embarrassment, he left. The terrorists did it because they assumed they could get away with it because the United States is weak and ineffective and no longer respected. We are no longer respected. We are a failing nation. I mean, it's horrible. You don't want to say it. I wish I didn't have to say it. I wish I could say they're doing a phenomenal job. I wouldn't run. I wouldn't run. I wouldn't have to run. I would be very happy to have somebody do a phenomenal job. I wouldn't have to run. And I'd be very happy with that. I'd be proud of our country. But right now, our country is a joke. It's being laughed at all over the world. The truth is, Harris and Biden's weakness is inviting every rogue enemy worldwide to absolutely get away with murder. In my next term, we will build a great iron dome, missile defense shield over our country, a dome like has never been seen before. 
and it will be entirely made in the USA and right here in Pennsylvania, big sections of it. And I will cut, remember this, I will cut all of the bad talk about Social Security. They're going to destroy your Social Security, but I will not cut one cent from Social Security or Medicare. And I kept my promise for four years that I will keep it again. And seniors should not pay taxes on Social Security. And they won't. They won't. There are the people. It's up to you. No tax on Social Security. By contrast, Kamala cast a tie-breaking vote to cut Medicare. You saw this? By $237 billion in a heartless betrayal of American seniors, we're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., clean it up, renovate it, fix it, rebuild it. We will again have the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world, and there will be no crime, no crime allowed, very strong. Right now, you go there, you get mugged, you get shot. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports. How simple is that? I will fully uphold our Second Amendment, as I did for four years. We just got the backing of the NRA, complete and total endorsement from the NRA. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech to our country again. And very importantly, I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, voter ID. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. A lot of other countries are doing it. The mail-in voting isn't working. It's corrupt. But until then, Republicans must win. We want to have a landslide because the best way to protect against the rigging, and these people know it, is too big to rig. There's a level at which they can't cheat. So if you want to save America, get your friends, get your family, get everyone you know, and vote. Vote early. Vote absentee. Vote on Election Day. I don't care when you vote. But whatever you do, you have to vote and make sure your ballot counts. Because these people cheat. They cheat like dogs. And if you want to help us ensure election integrity, sign up at protectthevote.com. Protectthevote.com. And in conclusion, from Easton to Hershey, from Jamestown to Allentown, and from Pittsburgh to right here in beautiful Harrisburg, love Harrisburg, we got a lot of votes in Harrisburg. We stand on the shoulders of American legends who poured out their blood, sweat, and tears for our rights and for our freedom. Pennsylvania is where our founding fathers declared America independence. Think of that. Think of the history that this great, great place is beautiful. Pennsylvania, think of the history that you have. It's where the Army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge, where General George Washington would never take his name off any buildings they'd like to. When they want to take Washington, Lincoln, and Jefferson off, it ain't going to happen. But it will happen under her. George Washington led his men on a daring mission across the Delaware and where the Union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg, Gettysburg, wow. Gettysburg. And this is the state where generations of tough, strong Pennsylvania miners and steel workers forged the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in serious decline. We are a failing nation. 
We are a nation that has lost its confidence, lost its willpower, and lost its strength. We are a nation that has lost, quite simply, its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue less than four years ago. We were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. Soon be. With our leadership, every disaster Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have created can be fixed and be quick, very quickly. We're going to do it so quickly. Remember, I used to tell the story, we're going to win, 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 right? We're going to win so much, you're going to get tired of winning. We're going to win. We're going to start winning. Please, please, Mr. President, we're winning too much. We can't take it anymore. We're going to win, win, win. Every problem can be solved and every wrong can be rectified. By this time next year, America's borders will be strong, sealed, and secure. Inflation will be a full thing of the past. It will be in full retreat. Our economy will be roaring back. Optimism will be surging. The American dream will be thriving again for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Law and justice will reign all throughout our land. Freedom will be restored. The flame of liberty will be burning bright. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the worst administration in the history of our country, will be a fading memory of the past. And our great silent majority, including the once forgotten men and women of our country, will be the one shaping America's magnificent future when I am the 47th President of the United States. Because we are all Americans, and together we will show November 5th to be the most important day in the history of our country. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. Make America wealthy again. Make America strong again. Make America proud again. Make America safe again. Make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Pennsylvania. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.